When a stream is created and then displayed, you'll see that the cutter appears as a promise. That has to do with the implementation of streams. A promise, conceptually, is an expression along with an environment in which that expression will eventually be evaluated. Delaying an expression creates a promise. A promise to evaluate that expression later, but to evaluate it in the current environment. Forcing a promise causes evaluation. It returns the value of that expression in the environment in which that expression was originally defined and then delayed. Here's a snippet of scheme code that uses the delay procedure. Define a promise where we let x equal 2, and then we delay the expression plus x1. Delay creates a promise, but doesn't do any addition. Not until that promise is forced do we add x and 1 together. But which x? Well, this x. Even though this x is out of scope, it's part of the promise, because the delay happened when x was defined. In fact, if I tried to redefine x, that would not change the promise. Whenever it were forced, we would still have x bound to 2, because that's the environment in which this was created in the first place. Here's one possible implementation of delay and force. To delay an expression means to replace delay expression with lambda taking no arguments and that expression. Forcing a promise means to call that promise as if it were a procedure. This implementation is equivalent to saying that every time you delay an expression, you're really just writing lambda with no arguments. Every time you force, you call the lambda procedure that was created when the expression was delayed. So really there's nothing more to lazy evaluation than creating procedures with the body that is the expression to be delayed and then calling that procedure when it's time to evaluate the expression, whenever the value is needed. A stream is a list, but the rest of the list is computed only when forced. So for example, if we define ones, as the stream starting with one and followed by many more ones, this infinite stream is typically displayed as one in a pair where the cutter is a promise. And this promise is some expression yet to be evaluated. In this case, the symbol ones. Here's a possible implementation of constream and cutter stream. To constream A and B, one just conses A with a delayed version of B. It must be a macro to ensure that this expression is not evaluated when constream is called. So we call constream, we build instead cons1 delay ones. Since one is delayed, it's placed inside the body of a lambda procedure, and that's why it never gets evaluated not until somebody asks for its value. And that's the job of cutter stream, is to get the cutter of s and force it in order to get its value. So when you see one dot promise, a reasonable way to think about it is one dot, and then a lambda procedure, which is an expression, the symbol ones, paired with an environment, the environment in this case, in which ones is defined as the pair one dot the promise. The only thing left to say about promises is that they can be not forced or forced. That is another implementation detail, where it's typical that instead of returning a lambda procedure for a delayed expression, you memoize that lambda procedure so that the first time it's called, the expression is evaluated, but the second time it's called using force the value is already stored, and so there's no need to compute the value again. But memoizing these lambda procedures doesn't change their behavior, it only changes their efficiency, which can make a large difference when writing recursive procedures that work with streams.